Question, what will scientists do during a zombie apocalypse? Answer, graph zombie data, of course. Welcome to 24-7 Science. Today we'll learn the type of graph to use when there's data to graph from a zombie apocalypse. Is it a bar or line graph? Graphs are important tools for scientists to display their data. Making important conclusions from data would be much harder without graphing. For example, here's a chart that displays the best states to live in if you want a chance at surviving a zombie apocalypse. With a quick glance, you can almost learn nothing from the data. But graph some of it, and suddenly you can see some of the important trends. Take some of the data from the chart and you get this graph, which shows the top 10 safest states to be in during a zombie apocalypse, where Alaska would be ranked as the safest state in the Union. Among other categories, Alaska actually comes out on top because of its ranking in military personnel, gun ownership, and its number of laser tag facilities. These graphs help display the data in the chart about the zombie apocalypse and why Alaska comes out on top. Choosing the correct type of graph to display your data can seem difficult because there's many types of graphs to choose from. There can be zombie scatterplot graphs, zombie pie charts, zombie pictograms, there are even zombie food pyramids. This video's focus is how to determine when to use the two most common types of graph, bar and line graphs. Okay, first you have to know the graphing rules. Bar graphs are used to display data with unique categories, trying to show the difference between the groups. Like with this graph which shows survivability in zombie outbreaks. Now the rules for a line graph. Line graphs show changes in one variable, or changes over time. In a line graph, one variable has been divided up and is displayed on the x-axis. This is shown in the graph displayed, as time is the variable that is changing. Danger level goes down over time because everybody turns into zombies, and there's no more danger. So let's look at some examples. I'll give you the data and you determine should it be placed in a bar or line graph. Okay, data table one. The most useful weapons to use during a zombie apocalypse. Study the information in the data table and determine should a bar or line graph be used to graph this data. The proper graph for this data would be a bar graph because each of the different weapons represent a unique category compared to each other most properly displayed as a bar graph. Let's try a second one, data table 2. Things an average person would do during a zombie apocalypse. So we have different activities and the percent of the population that would do each of the activities. Should the data be used to make a bar or line graph? Once again the best graph choice is a bar graph because the different activities each represent a unique category and they're compared against each other. Graphing the data from this data table also helps us easily see that most people would spend their time tasting delicious during a zombie apocalypse. Let's look at a third example. The popularity of zombies over time according to Google searches. This Google data ranks zombie searches over the last few years compared to the peak year of zombie searching which was in 2013. It's also interesting to note that Mexico and Peru are the top searchers for zombies. So should a bar or line graph be made from this data? Since there's one variable divided up, time, the best type of graph to use for this data would be a line graph, where time is on the x-axis and the search ranking is on the vertical y. Let's go to data table 4. Here we have a comparison of body temperature between humans, cats, and zombies that have just been formed. When data tables become this complex, it's easy to see why graphing data is useful for scientists to help display their data and make conclusions about the meaning and trends inside the data. So what do you see? Should this be a bar or line graph? This data is best displayed as a line graph, where time is the one variable divided up on the x-axis and body temperature is on the y. Once the data is put into a graph, it's more easy to see the trends in the data. Most organisms, like humans and cats, have a constant body temperatures, 
but zombie body temperature varies with the temperature outside. It can also be inferred that the initial body temperature of the zombie of 107 degrees Fahrenheit must have been left over from the infected person's fever before they died. Okay, one last example, data table 5. Hollywood zombie speed compared to humans since the 1940s. Stare at the data table and look at the trends and speed of zombies over time and decide should this information be best placed into a bar or a line graph. The number of years since zombies were discovered by Hollywood is one variable divided up, so the proper graph for this type of data would be a line graph. Graphing this data also helps the scientists easily see how zombie speeds have changed over time in comparison to human speed, which has remained relatively constant. So let's review. You use bar graphs when you have different groups or unique categories to put on a graph. On the other hand, you use line graphs when you want to show changes in one variable that has been divided up. Thanks for watching, and remember, teasing zombies is fun, but it never ends well. Please subscribe and please take a look at one of these other 24-7 science videos.